Good afternoon, everybody. This is Brian here at the Guitar Sanctuary uh, here in McKinney, Texas. Um, if you're not familiar with our store, we are a uh, boutique high-end uh, guitar store um, in McKinney, north of Dallas. Um, we're here right now in the Sanctuary, which is our uh, music venue, which uh, unfortunately, due to COVID-19, has been dormant for the past two months. Um, but we're really fortunate that when it's not that stuff going on. We have lots of cool folks here uh, that perform uh, at the sanctuary. Um, uh, as the one who kind of books the venue, um, I'm fortunate in that I get to kind of handpick a lot of my favorite guitar players um, to be here. Um, and we've had a long, cool history with the folks at True Fire. Um, I've done stuff with them uh, for a long time since kind of the birth of the channel back when I worked at a store up in the Northeast. Um, and so we're always looking at cool things to be able to do with them since there's so many of their artists that are friends of ours and people who have performed here at the sanctuary. Um, and so when they decided to do this egg hunt promotion for the month of April, we uh, wanted to reach out to them and kind of see how we could be involved. And uh, we worked together to help put together the prize package of goodies that uh, they're gonna be giving away for all the people that uh, find their eggs as they're going along and taking all their lessons. Um, it's not too late. If you haven't done it yet, if you're not a True Fire member, you can sign up now. Um, what better time to learn a ton more about your instrument and, and delve into all those styles that you've always wanted to learn, like finger picking or jazz playing or expanding your blues stuff or dive deep into your rock playing or whatever it may be, whether you're a beginner, whether you're an intermediate player, whether you're an advanced player and you're just looking to kind of brush up on some certain things or just push yourself in new directions, you know, uh, thanks to what's going on, we all have a ton of time to really be working on all those kind of things and working on all of our playing at this point. Um, and True Fire is a really amazing platform for that stuff. Um, you know, you've got all the great lesson content, you've got things like the music notation and the tab that flows along along the screen as you're working on the lesson, um, and all those types of deep dive stuff. You can take segments of the tracks and loop them and work on a section over and over as you need to. Um, and it's a really great way to kind of push yourself as a player and expand into styles that you haven't done before. Uh, I myself this week was working on some uh, blues lessons with Josh Smith. I was doing some finger picking stuff. Um, I was going through some of the um, cool kind of expanding your blues stuff with Corey Congilio. Um, and it's just a great way to kind of learn. So um, as part of that, in the spirit of that, when we started talking with the folks at True Fire about this egg hunt promo, um, I said to Brad and the folks there, hey, let's do some stuff that is cool gear that has um, something to do with the players that are there on the platform so that it's not just ah, it's some pedals or some guitars or some bags or whatever, but it's actually gear that those players use, those players are associated with. Um, you might have heard them use them in a live performance or something like that. So um, that's where we got together to put together these cool prizes for you guys to have an opportunity to win. Um, so we wanted to go over some of those things today and kind of talk a little bit about each one of them and answer any questions that you might have on them or those kind of things. Um, so we'll kind of, I've got some cool goodies here on, on the table behind me. It's never a, a bad day to be surrounded by cool gear. Um, so we'll start kind of with some of those things. Um, our buddy Matt Schofield um, was here a couple months ago doing a show here at the Sanctuary. Um, as usual, it was mind blowing. What can you say about Matt? Uh, one of the tastiest players out there. Um, we had the fortunate moments of uh, our, our buddy Andy Timmons getting up and doing a little bit of playing with him as well. Um, and, you know, truly special night. And one of the really interesting things to see with Matt is he's traveling with a really small board these days. Um, he is one of those guys, like all of us, that has started out with smaller rigs and kind of migrated up to the great big system with the switcher and all kinds of stuff going on. And for this tour, man, it was an amp and he had a really small pedal board. Um, so when we were thinking about some of the stuff with Matt, we wanted to kind of do one of his essentials. Matt uses one of our favorite tuner pedals. Um, this is the tuner from the folks at Sonic Research. It's called an ST300. It's a little mini strobe tuner. Um, nice and compact, so for if you've got small pedal board that you're doing, um, this thing is a little tiny. You can kind of see how much 
how small it is in the palm of my hand there with it. Um, one of the amazing things about these is the incredible accuracy of them. The sonic research is accurate within two one thousandths of a cent. Now to put that in perspective, a lot of your basic tuners that you're going to find, be it a headstock tuner or be it a pedal tuner, are accurate within plus or minus one cent. Now that's pretty accurate and gets you a pretty good degree of tuning stability and that kind of thing with them. Um, this is 2,000 times more accurate than that because of uh, what it's doing. So you can really, really, really get super fine tuning with it. It's also got a selection for doing modes and you can program in custom tuning modes to it. Where this is really useful is if you do have a guitar that has the buzz feet and tuning system, like a Tom Anderson, like a McPherson, if you have an older Sir with that. Um, if you have one of those guitars, They'll be accurate with a standard tuner, but in order to really take advantage of the BuzzFeed and tuning system, you need to have something that can do the BuzzFeed and offsets. Well, with the Sonic Research, you can actually program in those offsets in, and you can have a, a couple of settings where you can program in guitar one or two or three in here, so you can have all those offsets programmed in there and have it be super accurate and really get the benefit of what that tuning system is doing for you. So for Matt, we've got one of the cool Sonic Research uh, ST300 little mini tuners. These have a great uh, bright red display, so it's really easy to see it on a dark stage. And again, takes up super micro amount of space, doesn't draw much current, and super easy to use. Um, great piece for that. Um, on the pedal front, one of our other favorite uh, buddies and players um, is Andy Wood, um, who a bunch of you probably know from all of his work with the folks at Sir Guitars. Um, Sir makes a couple of Andy Wood signature model guitars. He's got his new signature pickups that he does with them. He's played with a ton of different people. Um, Andy's got a really great um, uh, YouTube channel himself where he do goes over a bunch of kind of things um, and does a bunch of work with the folks at True Fire too. Um, he's a monster mandolin player. He's a monster flat picking acoustic guitar player. And of course he's a monster electric guitar player. Um, one of the staples, uh, staples on his board is this Koji Comp from Sir. Um, this is one of those compressors that um, doesn't get talked about maybe enough when people talk about some of the coolest compressors out there. This is one of our absolute favorites. It's a dual mode compressor, so you can actually hold the switch down and toggle between two different sets of settings with it. Um, it's, you can, it's a parallel compressor, so you can set the level of the mix of the compression to the dry signal with it. You've got a bit more control than you do over a, a normal compressor. Um, and one of the things that's really cool on all the Sir pedals, and a lot of times people kind of don't realize them, if you see on the back here, you've got a couple of extra features. There is a little mini toggle switch, and there's a little eighth inch plug. In the case of the Koji Comp, uh, the eighth inch plug allows you to toggle between the two different compression modes from an external source. So if you are using a switcher like a Gig Rig or an RJM or a Musicom Lab or a Boss ES, and you want to be able to do that, you can put this in one of the loops, bring it in and out of your signal path, but you can also use the switch function to toggle between the two different compression modes. So you don't still have to then step on the pedal to do that. The other thing that they uh, do, and this is pretty much true of most all the Sir pedals, is they have a power up state switch. And what that lets you do is decide what happens to the pedal when it gets power. Um, if you're putting your pedals on a pedal board where you're using a switcher or you have them in a rack drawer and you fire up your system, not all pedals will just automatically come on. So in some cases you have to manually go and turn them on in your rack drawer or in your loop switcher so that they're ready when you bring it into a patch. With the Sur, you can actually decide what its power up state is so that you don't have to worry about that. Anytime it gets power, it's gonna come on the way you want it to be or stay off the way you want um, with it. So super cool pedal, super great build quality. Um, you know, Sur does a whole series of great pedals. A lot of people know them for their great guitars, which is probably what they're most well known for. They also do really great amplifiers um, and they do a great series of pedals. Um, you know, John, uh, has done a, a lot of work with folks like Custom Audio Electronics back in the day um, on electronic kind of stuff. So he's as deep in on the amp and pedal side as he is on the guitar side, but sometimes people don't kind of know that for him. Um, so for Andy Wood, we've got the Koji Comp compressor. Another one of our favorites uh, at the Sanctuary, um, we've had him a few times here on this stage and it's always a blast. Um, he's a great storyteller, he's a ridiculously amazing player. 
Um, he's kind of at the forefront of the generation of a lot of the people that are out there now um, on the cool acoustic side um, with his use of things like banjo tuners on the headstock to quickly change between two different tunings on the string and his crazy custom built guitar. Um, our buddy Adrian Legg from the UK who uh, we were in the middle of booking dates with him for a tour stop here when all the COVID-19 stuff happened and everything got locked down. So uh, Adrian, if you're out there, we're looking forward to having you back um, with it. Um, Adrian's another guy that uh, probably would surprise people in terms of how many pedals he uses because a lot of his tones are more on the clean side. Um, but he actually does have a pretty cool pedal board and is always rotating things and always got different things on his board. And for him, because he's flying everywhere he's going, size is always a big factor. So um, uh, Adrian uses the Exotic SP compressor, which is um, one of the most compact but yet still feature-filled compressors that's out there. Um, while it's super compact in size in terms of what it can do control-wise here on the top, inside there's actually switches and dip switch settings that you can do to further tweak what the compressor is doing. Um, you've got a switch here for doing high, low, or middle levels of compression, um, and then your overall blend. Again, this is another one that's a parallel compressor. So if you want to set it 100% wet, you can, but you can also do a blend between the compressed signal and the dry signal, and then an overall level. If you've got an exotic EP booster, it's the same footprint in terms of size. It's the same super durable housing with it. Um, makes a great kind of companion for if you've got an EP booster, you might have one of their SL drives um, with it uh, for a nice kind of compact pedal board. Maybe you need your little grab and go board and don't want to take your big full size compressor rig to, uh, out someplace. Or maybe you don't need a ton of control. You just need something kind of simple. Um, the Exotic is a great one. Um, used by a ton of different players um, out there and is a great you know, compact format guy, but without robbing you of a lot of feature set. Um, still great tones, still the ability to blend, which a lot of the small compressors kind of take away some of those controls. Um, so for our buddy Adrian Legg, this is the Exotic SP Compressor. Another one of our good buddies um, is Josh Smith. Um, Josh is another guy that um, while he's primarily known as a blues player, has a huge range of styles and things he can do. Um, and he's another guy that while he has some kind of more traditional tones and old school approach to things, he's really modern when it comes to his gear and his pedal board. Um, and one of the big pedals that Josh makes a ton of use of is the Eventide H9. Um, you've probably seen a ton of these on all of your favorite players' boards. You might see one, or you might see some people like Pete Thorne where he's got two on there, or sometimes three. Um, the great thing about H9 is it's the utility infielder of pedals. Um, this is the pedal you can put on your board, and no matter what you need it to be, it can be that pedal. Um, the hardware stays the same. so. You've got the same connections all the time. Um, the only thing that's changing is what algorithm you are running on the pedal. So if you want it to be a delay pedal, it can be an amazing delay pedal. If you want it to be reverb, it can do be an amazing reverb pedal. It is doing all of the algorithms from all of Eventide's very well-known factor pedals, um, like the time factor or the pitch factor. Um, uh, so you can do any of those kind of sounds with it. It's got amazing control via their app for your smartphone or your tablet. So you can pull up and control everything that it's doing um, within that. Um, it's fully MIDI switchable and MIDI programmable. Um, you can do all kinds of cool expression control and program what the expressions are doing with it. Um, and there's three tiers of the H9. When you buy it, it, the only difference between them is how many algorithms it comes with from the factory. The hardware remains the same. It's all the same box, it's all the same feature set, it's all the same controls. But for some players, you might not need as in-depth or crazy a version um, or as many effects as another player will do. So you can buy the H9 as the standard H9, which comes with eight main algorithms uh, within it. You can buy the H9 Core, which is very simple and only comes with one, or you can buy the H9 Max, which is what this one is, which comes with every algorithm that they've ever written for this pedal, and in the future, as they add new algorithms, you get them for free if you have the Max. If you have a normal H9 or you have an H9 Core, 
It's a subscription model like an app store, like what you do on your favorite uh, smartphone. You want a new algorithm, man, that looks really cool, I want to download that thing, you pay a fee and you buy that, the algorithm. Each one of the algorithms generally runs you about 20 bucks. So again, depends on the player. If you're the kind of player who you're going to use three or four things that it's going to do and that's going to be all you need it to be, a regular H9 might be fine for you. If you're the kind of player who always is looking for new sounds, always looking for new ways to tweak what you're doing, the H9 Max gets you every algorithm they've ever done, and as they come out with new algorithms, you always get them. It just shows up on your app and tells you, hey, there's a new algorithm, there's new software going, and you download it in there. Um, if you're working in the studio, you can have the H9 on your pedal board, you can have your tablet up on a stand, and every parameter about what it's doing, you can control. Um, Josh talks about how uh, it saves him on sessions all the time because no matter what the producer is looking for, he can roll in with his pedal board with his H9 and anything that they pretty much ask him for, he can pull up an algorithm on the H9 and do the sound that they need to have for that given session. Um, so it's super cool that way. You can use two of them together. Um, if you have something like an H9 Max, you can buy the core, which only comes with the one algorithm from the factory, and when you register it to your account, um, it will sync to the highest level of software that you have, so it will instantly become a max. So that works well for players. Maybe you have two boards, uh, your main electric board, and maybe you have a smaller uh, grab-and-go board, or maybe you have an acoustic rig board, or your church board. You can put one on each one. Or on a more complex setup, you can have two of them, and depending on your preset that you're doing or the sounds that you need, the two of them can do whatever you need to give, be for that given patch. Um, for instance, one could be doing uh, chorus and the second one could be doing delay, or maybe the first one could be doing delay and the second one could be doing reverb, or you can have it do overdrive, or of course, Eventide is the king of all things harmony, so you, maybe you might be doing a harmonization and a reverb. Um, and it's great for saving space on your board because a lot of players you know, you might have, uh, take modulation for instance, uh, you're almost never gonna run phase and chorus or phase and flange or chorus and flange at the same time. So if you have a phaser and a flanger and a chorus on your pedal, on your board, that's three spaces you're taking up, that's three sets of cabling you're using, that's three sets of power that you're using, and you're probably never gonna have them on together. If you have an H9, depending on your preset, you might need it to be chorus one minute, or it could be flange the next minute, or it could be doing your tremolo the next minute, and it's all from the same pedal, it's all from the same space, it's all the same cabling and power, so you're not having to take as many spaces up on your board to do those unique effects. Um, you know, like harmony, for instance, if you're a heavy duty harmony player, you're probably still only using harmony 10 or 15% of the time. Well, with a normal harmony pedal, that means that 85% of the time it's sitting on your board and not doing anything. It's just taking up space, it's taking power, it's taking cabling. And with the H9, when it's not being harmony, oh, well, it could be a cool second delay for that certain sound that you want, or it could be doing a cool fuzz or overdrive sound, or it could be that big lush reverb that you need. Um, you can also, if you are not running the H9 in stereo, you can also do the pre and post cabling method, which what that means is you can use one side of it to do your pre effects, basically things you want in front of your drive stage or in front of the preamp of your amp, like modulations, like a phaser or a flanger. And you can put the other side to be your post effects, meaning after your drive stages, typically things like delay or reverb or other time-based effects. So with the H9, within your presets, if you have it cabled that way, you can actually change the effect order within your pedal board um, or within your signal path per preset. So if at one moment I need it to be a phaser, it can be out in front of my drive stage or in front of the amp's gain stage. If a next moment I need it to be a delay, it can be after the drive stage or after the gain stage on the amp. Um, so it adds a ton of flexibility. Um, and then if you add something like an expression pedal, you know, the sky's the limit. It can be a crazy wah pedal, um, it can be doing tremolo sounds. Um, most all of the stuff that you hear Josh Smith playing where he's doing Leslie sounds, it's pretty much always the H9. Um, so, Josh, that one's for you, the Eventide H9 Max. Another one of our good buddies, um, he's one of the most um, sought after uh, Texas guitar players um, 
even though he's not originally from Texas, I think everybody pretty much associates him with Texas, and that's uh, our good friend David Grissom. Um, David has performed at our venue several times. Um, our owners, George and May Lee, he played uh, guitar on their first two records. Um, you probably know his Paul Reed Smith signature model guitar, the DGT, or um, also his various amplifiers that he's done with them, the DG50 or the DG30. Um, when you think of tasty Texas tones, um, you know, he's one of the people you think of, uh, whether it was his solo stuff, um, whether it's his stuff with Joe Ely, whether it was his time with uh, John Cougar Mellencamp, um, you know, um, with it, whether it was with his band uh, Storyville, um, just one of the tastiest, most toneful players. Um, and when he comes here, oftentimes there's some little tweaks on his board. Maybe he's trying a different overdrive pedal here or there, or he's bringing a different amp with him depending on the room, or he's got a new PRS that they just built for him. But the staple on his board always um, is a Strymon El Capistan. Um, it's easily one of our most popular pedals. Um, it's easily um, uh, one of our most popular delay pedals just in general, which is saying a lot when you're talking about a $300 delay pedal. Um, where the name Capistan comes from, for you uh, young folk that have never seen tape, um, that's a reference to a tape delay. Um, so what this is, is basically a really fantastic um, replication of tape delay sounds or classic echoplex tones in a modern day pedal. Sounds fantastic. Um, there's often the debate amongst players of, you know, analog versus digital versus whatever. Um, to me, it just comes down to the simple rule. If it sounds good, it is good. Um, don't worry too much about what got you there. Um, when uh, our buddy Josh Scott from JHS was here, um, we talked about, um, uh, you know, the analogy I often use with customers all the time, and if you've been in the store, I've probably said this to you once, um, is, you know, I, I have my truck that's parked out in the parking lot. I have no idea what kind of camshaft is in it. It has never once, uh, you know, taken away from my enjoyment of driving that truck that I don't know what kind of camshaft is in it. If you plug into a pedal and you love the way it sounds, do you really care what's inside? You know, um, and this is a digital pedal that sounds like it's an analog pedal. This is uh, such a great job of replicating um, analog tape um, and a great old uh, take, tape echo unit like an Echoplex. You can add in things like the wow and flutter to get your classic modulation on the repeats. You can adjust the tape age you know, when you had an old tape echo unit, be it a Roland Space Echo or an Echoplex, when that tape cartridge is brand new, everything's really clean and clear and the repeats are pretty close to like a modern day digital delay where everything's a perfect replica. Well, as the tape gets older and older and older and gets used more and more, the high end starts to really degrade just like if you had an old dual cassette player and you were making bounce tracks back and forth with different mixes. You know, if your buddy brought you that cool cassette and you made a dub of it and then you dubbed it for your friend and he dubbed it for his friend, um, each copy, the high end got less and less and it got more compressed and a little more saturated. Um, that's what would happen on your old tape echo. So with the El Cap stand, you've actually got a control for tape age. So you can essentially decide, do I want it to be like a brand new cartridge or maybe I want it to be like an old tape cartridge. Um, you've got things to control the modes which set up different lengths of delay times that it can do. Um, you've got your classic uh, delay time knob here. You've got your typical mix control here. Um, unlike an old tape echo, you actually have a modern day tap echo, tap tempo switch on it. So you can tap in your tempo speed with your foot, alternatively to doing it with the knob from the time. Um, you can also do um, uh, expression control with it. Um, and depending on what you wanna do, this can be for external tap tempo. Um, or you can set up an expression pedal to control any of the knobs that you want on here. So maybe you want to adjust the mix on the fly, or maybe you want to lengthen out your delay time on the fly, or increase the saturation of the tape age or the wow and flutter on the fly. You can program that to be whatever you want it to be. Like all of the Strymon pedals in this format, there's also a set of extra functions for each one of the knobs. So if you hold both switches down, each one of these knobs does an extra function. Um, two of the ones that are my favorites is if you hold both of them down and you adjust the mix control, um, there is uh, a up to 3 dB of boost that you can do. So if you're the kind of player that every time you kick in a solo, you want to also add um, your delay in, 
and maybe you want to get a little above the band, well, where, if you set the boost control up here, up to that, say, 3 dB boost, whenever you turn on your LCAP stand, you'll also increase your level. So when you kick into the solo where you're going to add that delay patch, you can also get a little bit louder at the time if you want to. The other thing you can do on the time control is it will actually add reverb to the repeats. So if we set that all the way off, then we don't have any reverb added. It's just our typical tape echo sounds. But if I hold those two switches down and adjust that up, I can actually add reverb to the repeats as well. So if we want to add a little bit more lushness to the signal or make everything's a little wetter or bigger, that's a great feature for the player that is the single guitar player in a band and you need to kind of fatten your sound up or add a little bit to it. Um, so for our good buddy David Grissom, um, it's a Strymon El, uh, El Capistan. And again, David is one of the most um, finicky tone connoisseurs you're going to come across. You know, um, when they were working on his signature guitar with PRS, they were sending pickups back and forth and back and forth and back and forth from uh, Maryland down to Austin to keep tweaking them until they got them exactly how David wanted them. And you know, ah, this is close, but the high end's this or the low end's that. Send them back, get me another set. And so, you know, uh, same thing with his amps. He's real particular about all those things. So a guy like David, if David's using this, um, as picky as he is about tone, um, it should be good enough for all of us and, uh, and all of you out there. So for our good buddy David, the Strymon El Capistan. For our buddy uh, Ariel Posen, um, and those of you who may not be as hip to Ariel, um, Ariel is an amazing guitar player from Canada. He's also an amazing singer, um, super talented guy. Um, he's played with people like the Brothers Landreth, and he's got an amazing solo record out. Um, one of the killer, most killer slide players that you're going to come across. Um, um, and he's got that double threat of he's a great singer, um, or maybe triple threat, he's a great singer, he's a great songwriter, and he's just a hellacious guitar player. Um, he's one of those ones that you can uh, uh, go out to the gig and really dig the tunes and really be blown away by how uh, amazing his playing is. Plus all of his kind of cool use of baritone guitar and different tunings and things, and he's really got his own kind of signature style. Um, for our good buddy Ariel, uh, I've got this stand in today. This is a Chase Bliss mood uh, picture. Um, our fine friends at Chase Bliss, unfortunately, are completely shut down due to all of the COVID-19 related shelter in place orders. So as soon as they are able to get back to work, we'll have a, a fantastic mood pedal for one of the prize winners. Um, Chase Bliss is a really cool company in that they build pedals that are analog circuits um, and analog signal paths, but with really intelligent digital control. So for you folks out there that are torn between, well, do I get this analog pedal? Or do I get this digital pedal? I keep reading that I should like analog, or that I don't know, maybe I should like digital. Um, their pedals kind of offer a unique hybrid where the signal path for the pedal is completely analog, but you get to benefit from all the cool control that a modern digital pedal would offer, things like tap tempo and expression control and stuff. Um, you might have seen a Chase Bliss pedal uh, in a store and been a little daunted by all the little dip switches that are up at the top of it. What those allow you to do is control what is going on when you're plugging into the expression pedal jacks. Um, so you can control what function it is. Um, Mood combines kind of a cool delay circuit and a cool looping kind of function. So it gets you into some really interesting textures um, and different ways of, to approach looping than your typical just classic perfect on spot on digital looper that's just going to get you a perfect replication of what you've played. Mood, like the name implies, um, gets you into different kind of ambient moods and different uh, landscapes of sound that you can do. So it's one of those things that you kind of kick on and sit start playing with and you're going to find new things in your playing or new ways to kind of go because it's just going to kind of inspire you from the tones that it's doing. Um, it's not going to just be your typical, like, all right, I'm going to lay down this track and play over top of it. This is a pedal that's going to push your playing in new directions and, and lend you into different sounds and different styles um, based on those kinds of things uh, with it. So, uh, like I said, um, the fine folks at, at Chase Bliss who make really incredible pedals, um, and if you don't know some of their story, you should go to their website and check out um, uh, Joel's story about uh, how he founded the company and why it's called Chase Bliss um, and the, the tribute he pays to his brother with all the stuff that they do. 
Um, like a lot of our favorite vendors, they're an American company that is building things all by hand in a, in a small shop uh, here in the States. Um, so when you buy one of their pedals, you're supporting um, a great uh, independent small business um, who has a great network of employees that are building everything by hand um, and doing that stuff. Um, so they're a cool one to reach out to. Um, they're another one of those companies that right now it's tough for all of them. Uh, it's tough for stores like us. It's tough for a lot of our builders um, out there. So, you know, when you can afford to, uh, you know, take care of yourselves first, of course, with your bills and things like that, um, grabbing a cool pedal from a small builder like that um, really makes a big impact and really helps folks like that out a lot. Um, and so you can check out Ariel um, on his YouTube channel and on all his lessons here uh, on TrueFire and see some of the kind of cool things he does with different tone textures. He does some really interesting things with effects, not just your typical turn it on, leave it on kind of player. Um, so for our good buddy Ariel, um, the Chase Bliss Mood. So now we'll get into some of the, the kind of bigger stuff too. Um, a ton of you have probably seen this thing. Um, this is the Chase Bliss Ox Box um, in its fancy uh, shipping box here with it with all the kind of cool controls on it. Um, this is one of the coolest pieces of gear that we've seen come out in recent years. Um, uh, some of the principals at Universal Audio have been around in the industry for a tremendous amount of time, um, and I've known them from various companies they've worked for. Um, so when they reached out to me to, at NAM to kind of turn us on to the Oxbox, um, I went and got a chance to go see it and was really blown away by what it can do. Um, nowadays, more than ever before, um, have, have the ability to get good tones um, at lower volumes or for recording has been really big for people because, hey, we're all stuck at home. And while as much as we guitar players want to just rock out and crank it up, uh, your kids are probably home doing distance learning. Your spouse uh, is probably home doing work from home and working on Zoom meetings and things like that. So you can't necessarily just fire it up the way you'd really like to. But you also don't want to sacrifice your tones when you're doing that stuff. Um, so Aux is a little different than a lot of the other units out there. Um, one of the big things about universal audio interfaces and gear in general is they are running their software on their own native hardware. Um, and what that means for you when you're recording, if you're using a DAW at home, if you're running something on your Mac or your PC, most plugins or most things that you do for software are going to be using some of your computer cycles to run the plugin. So that puts a little more strain on your processor, that puts a little more strain on your interface, um, and all of that stuff can lead to the dreaded latency when you're recording. Um, and, you know, latency is, of course, the thing that everybody's always trying to avoid when you're recording digitally because you don't want to have that be any lag time from when you're playing something to when it actually gets recorded. Um, so part of the beauty of something like the Ox is all of what it's doing in terms of processing and the different speaker and mic modeling uh, that it's doing or emulations that it's doing is all happening natively on its hardware. So it's not tying up any of your computer's processing power to do that stuff. Um, with it, so that makes for things for a lot more seamless um, and gets rid of a lot of latency. Um, what this aux can do is you can connect this to your favorite tube amp. It provides a safe load for your amp. It can also be an attenuator to still continue to pass on to your amp's normal internal speaker or onto your speaker cabinet. So in a live situation, man, you know, I've got that classic old Marshall or Fender that uh, it only sounds great when I get it up to about six but at that point, it's too loud for most modern stages, it's too loud for home, or it's too loud for the church that you play at. Um, so what are you gonna do? Are you gonna turn down and get, you know, lose that magical tone that you're trying to create? Are you gonna stick it off in an amp closet or put a baffle around it or something like that? Well, the beauty of a great attenuator is we can kind of get to that sweet spot on the amp, but we can notch back the volume so that it's more reasonable for your situation. So in a live environment, it can be a simple attenuator for your rig. The real meat and potatoes are the real heart of what makes Ox cool is for its direct outputs, either through SPDIF or through the, XL, uh, the um, quarter inch outs that are balanced on the back. It will do a whole host of cabinet models and microphone models, as well as some processing like uh, delay and reverb on it as if you were in the recording studio. So you can add your delay and reverb after you've mic'd the cabinet 
you've got a host of different speaker cabinet choices that you can make that are all classic cabinets that we all know and love. You know, there's things based on your favorite 412s that come from the UK, um, or things that you, you know, from your favorite American uh, combos from Fullerton, in California, or from Petaluma, California, or places like that. Um, so you can dial up your favorite 112 or 212 or 412 flavors. You can dial up your favorite um, recording microphones, be it a Sennheiser or a Neumann or a Shure or um, whatever it is in there. You can adjust the mic placement, you can move them around, you can move the cabinet within the room, you can set up the proximity of that, and you can really do a great job of capturing what it's like to really mic a cabinet in a room um, and send that through those um, X, those quarter inch outs or through the SPDIF out. So in a live environment, say you're using the attenuator to kind of adjust your stage volume, the direct out that goes to the house, instead of miking your cabinet, you can actually have whatever your favorite cabinet is with your favorite microphone. So now you're not dependent on what's the noise that's going on in the room. Is it a carpeted floor? Is it a tile floor? Is it stone? What kind of microphone does this venue have? Oh, does he only have a 57? I always use a Sennheiser. Oh, I don't have that kind of thing. So you can actually capture all those things. It's actually got a set of um, presets that you can actually dial up um, with it. So you can program them at home in your favorite recording studio or environment, get all your favorite settings that you like for your specific amps, and when you go to the gig, you can just call up that specific setting and know that what you're sending to the house, either for the church or for the bar or the recording studio, is what you would kind of like it to be. You're not dependent on the sound man or their, or sound woman, as it may be, um, or their, how good their microphones are or how good their miking technique is or what's the ambience of the room or how dead is the stage or how live is the stage. You don't have to worry about any of that stuff. In a recording environment or home practice situation, you do have a headphone jack on it. So you want to get your favorite cranked plexi tones, but you want to do it at 2 a.m. when everybody else is sleeping, bam, throw on your favorite headphones, crank it up. You don't even need a cabinet attached to your amp, and you can get all those great tones, mess with your cabinets, mess with your mic modeling and that stuff. Or through the spit if out or through the balanced outputs on the back, you can go right to the board. Um, so right in for your recording studio. Um, and you could do it in conjunction with miking your favorite cabinet as well and use it as another track. Um, you know, we often hear about things like reamping. Uh, well, with something like the Ox, you could be playing through your favorite deluxe reverb and miking it with your favorite microphone, but also taking a signal to the Ox and maybe running it through a 412 cabinet with a different mic because maybe you might like the way that sounds. It also gives you a cool way to experiment with sounds you wouldn't ably be able to do at home. Like, man, I wonder what an AC30 would sound like through a Marshall 412 cabinet. Or what would my deluxe reverb sound like through a, a Vox's speaker cabinet? Well, now you can kind of, at the, at the touch of a click on your, uh, on your tablet or your Mac or your, uh, your phone, bam, I can try that out and listen to it. Man, what does it sound like if I move the mic around? Well, I don't have to get up and go around in a room and actually move microphones. You can just write on your tablet screen, move the mic placement, find what you like, and off you go. Um, so it gives you a lot of great features for that type of stuff. Um, it's different than impulse response. You'll hear a lot of stuff about impulse response and IRs, and there's a lot of great units that do that. The big difference there is an impulse response is still a snapshot. Um, it's one moment in time of what a speaker's doing uh, that they're capturing. It's not really necessarily capturing it the same way as the speaker when it's fully in motion. You know, uh, Just like a speaker is only in real impedance when it's at rest, when you're playing signal through a speaker, it's actually changing impedance the whole time and your amp is reacting to that. So the way the aux is actually doing its um, speaker profiling and mic profiling is different than a typical IR. Um, and there are a lot of players who like the way it reacts better and feel that it's a little more natural um, to what it would really be like to hear your speaker cabinet being mic'd in a room. Um, like I said, also gets you a lot of way to experiment with lots of different sounds. Um, and if you just need attenuation, um, it can do that too. So it's a great kind of multi-use box that you can stick on top of your amp. Um, the first year they showed them at NAM, you went to a lot of booths at the NAM show, which is always a terrible environment for hearing things. And a lot of the cool amp companies actually had auxes in their booths so that you could pop on a set of headphones and really hear what the amp sounded like in the din and chaos that is NAM. Um, I ran into one immediately at Two Rock, uh, and they were running it right through there. 
Um, so we did this one uh, in conjunction with our good buddy, Corey Congilio, who is one of the great instructors here on True Fire. Um, he may be a little bit less known name in the big circles than some of these people that are touring pros and stuff, but Corey is a great session guitar player and um, touring guitar player for a lot of artists out in Nashville. He also does a lot of work in the industry with people like Fishman and people like Martin Guitars and people like Paul Reed Smith and now with Universal Audio. Um, he's been our guest with us at the Dallas Guitar Show in our booth showing the Ox when it first came out. Um, and he has some really great courses. Um, as I've been diving deeper in True Fire, he's one of the guys that I've been going through some of his lessons and trying to steal some of his licks. So hey, thanks for that, Corey, by the way. So for Corey, we've got the Universal Audio Oxbox. Another one of our favorite artists um, that has performed at the sanctuary is Mimi Fox, um, who um, we got turned on to by our mutual friend, Andy Timmons. Um, and uh, he had done some work with her out at Paul Gilbert's um, guitar uh, camp out in California um, and uh, really raved about her playing and thought that she would be a perfect fit for our venue. And we checked her out and, and we agreed and we've done some really great shows with her. Um, Phenomenal player, um, great person, um, great sense of style. We've done a couple of great um, guitar clinics with her. Um, and she's really interesting that she blends a great mix of jazz with also acoustic playing, and she does some really cool jazz stuff on acoustic guitars. Um, so uh, real kind of different approach to a lot of stuff. Um, and she recently became a Taylor guitar in Dorsey. Um, uh, and so uh, every time she comes here to the venue, um, she spends the first half of her day raiding our acoustic room, going through all of our selection of tailors and picking out what stuff she thinks she wants to play for that night. Um, we turned her on to Taylor's baritone guitars and things like that. Um, and she's just a really great um, player, a great person, very knowledgeable, and has, I think, a really kind of unique approach, approach to the way that she goes about guitar that I think really different and kind of eye-opening for players. Um, Taylor has this great series of guitars that they came out with a couple years ago called the Academy Series. Um, like the name implies, they're geared at someone who is a student, someone who is learning, um, someone who's going to be working on a lot of stuff. So um, they're built for a lot of comfort. Um, it's got an armrest um, on it, so really nice for spending a lot of time sitting down at home practicing and playing. Boy, once you have an acoustic with an armrest, you never want to play one that doesn't have it. It becomes that addictive that quickly. It's just like going from playing a telly to playing a strat with the arm bevel and, and realizing, oh, that's more comfortable. Um, the Academy 12 is their grand concert body size. So while it's a full scale length um, with it, it's a little narrower in the waist and a little narrower at the shoulders than a dreadnought. It's not quite as deep um, as well. So it's great for sitting down. Um, it's great for younger players who are getting started who a dreadnought might be a little bit cumbersome to reach their arm across. Uh, it's also um, a great guitar for women um, who you know, have to think about uh, comfort when they're sitting down with the guitars in a different way than guys do um, with it. Um, but great sounding guitar. Um, all of their team out there at Taylor really wanted a guitar that was super easy to play um, and would be um, inspiring to play. We've all run into that thing where you hear the horror story of everybody's first guitar that you know, the action was super high off the neck and, you know, the, the neck was like a big tree trunk and they almost quit playing because it was so hard and luckily they got through it. Um, and we always wonder about how many players don't make it through and don't play because the first guitar they were given uh, was that budget thing that somebody found at a yard sale or in a pawn shop because they didn't want to spend too much when somebody was getting started. Um, and just was unplayable, and so the player gets frustrated and thinks like, oh, maybe I just can't do this, and a lot of times it's not the player. It's just the guitar they were given is just an unplayable thing. So the beauty of the Taylor Academy Series guitars, like all Taylors, is they're known for just incredible playability, um, you know, amazing action, amazing ease of play. It's a simple guitar in terms of cosmetics. It's satin finish. It's no frills. Um, but it's incredibly well made. It plays really well. Um, the Academy 12E has electronics built in. It's got a tuner built into it, so you can take it and go play. You can go play on the worship team. You can go play at the coffee house. You can go do that open mic jam. 
Um, you can go play with your church. You can go play acoustic guitar in your rock band, whatever you need to do. Um, and just have a really good, great playing guitar that's very comfortable, that's going to get you a good tone, and yet still be um, in a good budget range that most players can afford and actually attain a nice sounding guitar without spending a ton of money. Um, so that's a really cool one. So for Mimi Fox, we've got the Taylor Academy 12E. Now, what good with a acoustic guitar with a pickup in it be if you didn't have a cool amp? Um, so also as a shout out with our buddy Corey and just in general, um, this is a Fishman um, Loudbox Mini Charge. Um, the Loudbox Mini is a great small little portable amp um, it, but it's amazingly loud. It's 60 watts of power, so you can go do that little coffee house gig. You can go do that little open mic kind of thing. You've got input for your guitar. You've got an XLR input for your vocal microphone, so you can sing and play guitar. Um, these models also have Bluetooth built in, so you can fire up your phone or your tablet um, and either use it to have backing tracks that maybe you play along to, or if you're working on learning a tune and you want to kind of play along with the track, you can call up your, uh, you know, your, your favorite uh, tunes in your phone or your tablet and have them play right through the amplifier while you're playing your guitar through it as well. Um, if you don't have Bluetooth stuff with it, you can also do aux in thing. And then what's cool about the charge is this particular one actually has battery cell built into it. So you've got a charger that comes with the amp that you can plug in and either plug it into the wall like you would any other amp but you can charge it, unplug the charger, and you can take this thing with you and go play at that cool outdoor gig or um, any place else that you need to do where maybe power is gonna be a problem. Um, one of our customers, um, she is a pastor and she plays for a lot of weddings and services and things like that. And a lot of times it's a beautiful outdoor setting and you don't want to be dealing with having a generator running in the background and a long extension cord across the beautiful wedding scene. So she brings her Loudbox Mini Charge, shout out to you, Reverend Kate, um, and takes that with her so that she can perform and do that kind of stuff. Now, some of the battery part or amps out there just don't have very much power, but that's where the, the Mini Charge comes in well, is it's actually got 60 watts of power, so it's loud enough to like really play at a decent kind of setup. So. The cool flexibility here is if you're home and you've got power, great, plug it in just like any other amp that you want. But you can also take this and go play outside. It's also cool for you're having that party when we are all allowed to have gatherings again and not have to social distance as much. You're doing that pool party outside, you wanna play some tunes? Well, hey, it's Bluetooth. Hook it up to your phone, bring it outside on the pool deck, fire it up, it's battery powered and now you've got a, your cool uh, you know, portable jukebox right out there with you too and it also is your great acoustic guitar amp. Um, so from uh, Fishman, this is a Loudbox Mini Charge. Um, last, and certainly not least, um, a lot of you who are familiar with the store know that we have an amazing relationship with Andy Timmons. Um, he's a very good friend of ours. He's a very good friend of our owners, George and May Lee. Um, he has been a, a big supporter of the store since we got started. Um, we're kind of his home base and home venue. Um, our pedal board builder, Brian Amillion, works on his pedal board. Our guitar tech, Daniel Kirkland, works on his guitar all the time. Um, we're always trying to turn him on to gear, and he's always turning on uh, us on to gear um, and things like that. Um, so we're really fortunate to have that relationship with him, have him a fr as a friend of ours, have him as a supporter of ours. Um, most of you are probably hip to just what an absolutely amazing guitar player he is. Um, but as great as a player as he is, he's a better person. Anybody who's ever met him when they have come through and met him at maybe the guitar show or one of the, um, uh, a concert, or he's come to your town and played or done a clinic for Mesa Boogie or Ibanez or somebody, you realize like what a just generally good person he is and what a great ambassador he is for all things guitar. Um, so in the spirit of our good buddy, Annie Timmons, this is his newest signature model Ibanez ATZ100. Um, this is kind of a melding of his classic AT100 guitar that you're probably all familiar with, um, with their new AT um, AZ platform, which has a little bit more of a refined kind of body shape profile to it. Um, they have roasted maple necks for great stability and the great feel of a great worn in vintage guitar that you've worn off all the finish with them. Um, they also do things like stainless steel frets with these. Um, it's got locking tuners, it has 
um, the cruiser pickups that you uh, have seen Andy play with a lot, um, but in this case, three of a more single coil kind of classic layout. Um, so his normal AT100 guitar has the humbucker single coil, single coil layout. This is more of a three single coil layout, so a little bit more of a varied um, setup with them. Um, the guitar that uh, the prize winner is gonna get is actually signed by Andy himself uh, with it. Um, Super amazing playing guitar. It's a very understated and kind of subtle guitar. It's got a beautiful satin finish on it. Um, it's not a real blingy, uh, fancy guitar, but it's a phenomenal sounding guitar and a phenomenal playing guitar. Um, a lot of people don't realize Andy's favorite necks are actually pretty vintage. So um, Andy's is one of the only guitars in the Ibanez lineup where it's actually got a one and five eighths inch nut width, which is more of what you'd find on a classic vintage guitar as opposed to the more modern 1 and 11 16 inch uh, nut width that you find on most modern guitars and certainly most Ibanez's. His guitar is also a little bit more of a bigger, more vintage neck profile as well. It's not quite as thin and flat as a typical, like a Wizard or a Wizard 2 neck or something like that. It's not the quote unquote shred neck that you'd expect from a lot of Ibanez guitars. This is more, if you've come from playing vintage guitars, um, you would pick up an ATZ or an AT100 and the neck would feel pretty at home to you, a lot more so than a lot of other modern guitars out there. Um, so again, this is uh, for our good buddy, Andy Timmons. This is the ATZ100. Um, Andy's got a couple of amazing courses here on True Fire. Um, like a lot of artists that are out there, um, Andy's doing a lot of stuff from home right now um, and really trying to kind of expand his reach out to people and keep people listening and keep people playing, keep playing people inspired. Um, so you want to check out his website. You want to check out the stuff he's doing on Stage It. I think he's doing two Stage It's tomorrow. Um, so if you've ever wanted to have a bit of an intimate experience with Andy or make a request and have him play a song for you or something like that or answer a question about stuff, um, check out the stuff that he's doing. Um, but, you know, this is an amazing prize too. This is an Ibanez ATZ100 Andy Timmons signature model guitar. Um, so that covers a, a cool batch of prizes. Um, you know, we wanted to have it be, again, something a little more involved than just a batch of stuff that we kind of picked haphazardly. Um, we really wanted to work on stuff that if you're doing lessons from some of these players here on True Fire and you're getting into this, their stuff and their tones, um, these are things that are all stuff that those players actually use. This is stuff from their boards. Um, stuff where we've seen the stuff that they have when they come and play, or like I called Andy Wood the other day to just go, all right, Andy, so what's an essential piece of gear that you would have on your board um, that should be part of this kind of thing? Um, so this is stuff that they're really using. This is not something that's just uh, from an ad or that kind of stuff. This is all inspiration from stuff that is on their boards, is in their studios, is in their hands that they're using and making music with. So uh, hopefully uh, all of you folks are, uh, you know, obviously a bunch of you that are watching, um, you all have a good chance to do this. So you still have time to go to truefire.com, sign up if you haven't already. If you're already a member, um, go through your lessons. You're gonna find those special uh, eggs throughout the system. Um, and the more eggs that you earn, the more times that you're working on lessons and find those kind of things, the better chance you have to win one of these super cool prizes. Um, and we're really proud to uh, have been able to team up with the folks at True Fire to do this because, you know, at the end of the day, this is all supposed to be fun. And with all of what's going on right now, what better escape for all of us um, is there than making music and playing guitar um, for I know for myself and probably everybody at our staff, that's why we all started playing in the first place, was uh, as that kind of great escape um, with it. And at times like these, when things are really crazy, music is a really phenomenal um, way to do it. Um, I, like I'm sure a ton of you, have been really blown away by all the cool creative things that we've seen a lot of players doing online. Um, split screen videos where they're in one place and their drummer's in another place and the bass player's in another place and they're doing a track together um, with that stuff or two players on opposite sides of the world are jamming together. So if there's anything that's gonna kinda come out of this whole thing positive, I think it's gonna be a lot of creativity from a lot of players and some stuff that'll get us all inspired and that kind of thing. Nick, we got any kind of big crazy questions that anybody's asked that we should address? Hi, this is Nick, I'm off screen. 
Brian, evidently you're doing such a great job, <laughs> uh, so thorough that we don't have any gear questions. We have a lot of greetings and hello from around the world. Cool. Hello to everybody out there. Yeah. If you're not familiar with our shop, be, uh, please be sure to check us out at guitarsanctuary.com or thetoguitarsanctuary.com. Um, check us out on Facebook. Check us out on Instagram, True Fire. Um, you know, uh, we're an independent store. We're a family-owned store. Um, like the, all of the independent stores in your local market or your area, um, it's tough for everybody right now. Um, and we're all doing everything we all can do to kind of get by. Um, so we appreciate everybody's support. Whether you bought a pack of strings from us, whether you brought some picks from us, whether you've bought a pedal, whether you've bought a guitar, whether you've bought an amp, um, all that stuff really does make a difference. Um, and for all of us that are doing what we can right now to keep going and keep things going online and all that kind of stuff, we really do greatly appreciate it. It really does uh, mean a bunch to us. You know, every sale really counts. And for us as a store, it's really important to just spread our love of gear, spread our love of, of stuff. You know. Uh, uh, like is the case with all of the music stores that are out there, all of your local stores and all the stores that you all shop at. Um, if any of us really wanted to do this to make piles and piles of money, we all would have invested in the stock market or done something else. Um, for all of us, this is a passion. This is what we want to do. Um, for a lot of us, this is all we know to do. This is uh, what consumes our lives uh, uh, with it. And we love those opportunities to turn people on to cool things um, and stuff to inspire them. And it's always fun when you turn a customer or a friend or a player on a cool piece of gear and then you see them do something really cool with it or you hear that new track that they recorded with that guitar or amp or pedal or whatever um, and see them be inspired with it. Um, that's the coolest thing out there for us. So, you know, um, we greatly do appreciate your support. We hope everybody really stays safe in all these crazy times. We look forward to seeing you at an upcoming show at the Sanctuary where one of these players that we mentioned is here playing. Um, they're itching to get out and play for you guys um, with it. And in the meantime, while that can't happen, dive deep. Jump into truefire.com. Um, pull up a lesson that uh, is a style that you've never played before, you've never tried before but is intriguing to you, uh, you know, I, I always like to think of it when I was teaching, I call it rut busters. You know, it's, we all get stuck playing the same stuff we play all the time because it's easy and it's comfortable and you already know how to do it and nobody likes to feel stu stupid playing wrong notes or things like that. But the way you grow as a player uh, is to push yourself into new directions and all of your favorite players um, all pull things from different styles and different techniques and, and, uh, and different players that they've heard that have been influences on them. So now's the time to pull up that fingerstyle lesson if you've never played fingerstyle before. I haven't, and I sat working on a lesson the other day and it was, uh, you know, busting my butt um, trying to get these finger-picked rhythms going. Um, but it gave me a really great new appreciation and it started to push me as a player and it got me inspired to kind of work on some new stuff. So. You know, find that cool thing, pull up that player that you've heard of but maybe haven't really become uh, deeply um, involved or known about their playing all that well. Pick a new instructor that you haven't ever seen before. Pull up that funk guitar lesson. I was working on one of those the other day where they were working on some of the Nile Rodgers stuff or stuff from Michael Jackson. Um, and it's really interesting to me to get into all that kind of stuff. So, you know, push yourself as a player, keep practicing, keep playing, stay safe. Um, and, you know, we'll see you the next time.